Welcome back to our channel, friends. This is Dr. R. Kartikeyan doing MD Medicine from MC. So today we'll be continuing with our clinical cardiology series, where we will try to integrate the jugular venous pulse with the cardiac cycle changes, so that it won't be a mystery anymore. Okay, let's go. First is how to locate this jugular vein, which is the internal jugular vein. We'll be seeing how to measure JVP and how to differentiate from cardiac pulsation in the later part. Now we will just see what is the jugular vein need to do with the JVP. See, this is the jugular vein in between the this is the sternal to the mastoid muscle. In between this clavicular head and sternal head, we can find this jugular veins, internal jugular vein. It passes deep to sternal to the mastoid and becomes superficial here. Okay, this is the carotid artery and this is the external jugular vein. Okay. Now, see this is the internal jugular vein. Actually, if you see this right internal jugular vein, this joins with the external jugular vein and subclavian vein and finally forms the SVC, which is in straight line with the right atrium. So, whatever pressure changes in the right atrium as well as right ventricle will be transmitted through the jugular vein which is the right internal jugular vein. So only we are using right internal jugular vein for measurement of jugular venous pressure. Okay. So first we need to know what are the waveforms in the JVP. Okay. What are the jugular venous pulse waveform? This remains a mystery. Okay. For this first let's recap cardiac cycle events so that it becomes very easy to learn how JVP changes. See, this is the cardiac cycle. See here, first what happens is, as we know, it comprises of first part which will be the ventricular systole and then ventricle will relax and receive the blood which is the ventricular diastole. Okay. So, uh, ventricular systole starts once the this atrioventricular valve closes. See, I have gone only the right part of the heart. This atrioventricular valve closes and the ventricle starts to relax, starts to develop the force of contraction. This phase we call it as isovolumetric contraction, since the volume doesn't change here. Then what happens? The ventricle starts contracting actively, followed by the opening of it, uh, semilunar valves, aortic and pulmonary valves, leading to ejection of blood into the outflow tracts, like pulmonary artery and aorta. So, this is the active phase of ventricular systole. Followed by what happens? The aortic and pulmonary valves close, leading to production of S2. Then, what happens? The ventricle starts to relax. Now, this atrioventricular valves open. And whatever blood which is stored in the atrium falls back to you. This is the early diastolic filling. Okay. Yes. Next, what happens is fresh blood comes from the draining veins and drains into the ventricles. This fresh draining of blood contributes to the mid diastolic filling. Okay. Next, what happens? Remaining portion of blood in the atrium is contacted by the atrium actively leading to filling of blood in the late part of ventricular diastole, which is late diastolic filling, which is contributed by the atrial contraction. See, in the whole part of cardiac cycle, if only in this phase, the atrium contracts actively. So, this phase, we can say it as atrial systole. And the remaining entire part of the cardiac cycle, atrium will be relaxing only atrial diastole. So, after followed by this the atrial contraction, what will happen? The atrioventricular valves will close. So, again, this cycle will occur. S1 will close, followed by ventricular systole, and S2 and ventricular diastole. This is the cardiac cycle in brief. 
So how does this help in understanding JVP? Let's see. So first we will start with this phase atrial cisco. Okay. So what happens in atrial cisco? As we told, the atrium contracts vigorously, so active contraction leads to increased pressure in the atrium. This increased pressure, back pressure, is transmitted to the jugular veins, which distends the jugular vein outwards. This contributes to the A wave in JVP. So it is a positive wave since it is distended outward it is a positive wave and how can we remember a for atrial contraction okay a wave atrial contraction positive distended wave yes next i told s1 which represents closure of uh, atri uh ventricular valves next what happens uh the ventricle starts to contract at that time when ventricle is pushing blood actively into the outflow tract it also causes this cusps of the tricuspid valves to bulge in upward. Okay, this upward bulge, this increased pressure is transmitted again to the jugular vein as a small positive wave, which is the C wave of JVP. So, C you can remember as cusp wave due to outward bulging of cusp in early part of ventricular systole. Cusp. Okay, yes, C for cusp wave, positive wave. Next, what happens? See here. Next, what happens is the ventricle starts to contract vigorously. So, during the contraction, what it does is this tricuspid valve and the floor of the right atrium is pulled downwards because of the contracting right ventricle, it is pulling the right atrial flow downwards. And also, atrium is relaxing now. It's a, a diastole for atrium. Atrium is relaxing. So, what happens? All the blood in the jugular veins drains into this spacious atrium. So, that contributes to fall in pressure with respect to jugular veins because all blood is emptied into the atrium. So, this fall in pressure is told as X descent, fall in pressure, descent, negative wave. Okay. Negative wave, which is the X descent. You can remember as atrium is relaxing. X, X descent. Okay. Next, what happens next is, see, next what happens is, atrium is continuously filled with blood. Now, the next blood is closed. So, what happens? Since further more and more blood comes into this space, what will happen? The pressure starts to increase slowly. This is contributed by a positive wave, which is the V wave, or due to increase in volume of blood in the atrium, this V wave is occurring. So we can say it as volume wave or V wave. Why am I saying volume wave? It has one more clinical consequences. Like in hypovolemia, this V wave won't be significant. Okay, so you can remember as volume wave or V wave. So the pressure is a positive wave. Yeah. Next, what happens? As we know, the this aortic valves close in this phase because now the ventricle starts to relax. So this contributes to S2. Okay. What happens now is so this much amount of blood in this atrium falls passively instantly in the early part of diastolic early diastolic filling so that means what happens to the veins all the blood in the veins is emptied into the ventricles rapidly in the early part of diastole this contributes to the wide descent of jvp how you can remember m uh, wide descent wide descent it's a negative way because since all the blood is empty, pressure falls, and emptied, you can remember as emptying for wide descent. Okay, yes. So, next, what will happen? So, uh, the blood, what of blood in the atrium has emptied, now fresh blood from the veins will start to empty into the ventricles. Yes, fresh blood starting to empty in the ventricles. Okay, next, what happens? See, next, again, this valve will, uh, the, the atrium will start to contract vigorously. So, what will, what's happening again? 
atrial wave atrial contraction wave which is the a wave so i have completed this cycle followed by closure of atrioventricular valve which is s1 so what and all we have seen we will i will just go through a short thing here see here this is the short of entire thing i have discussed till now see this what is happening here so first i told the atrium is contracting vigorously see from here it starts late diastolic filling it starts atrium is contracting vigorously leading to outward bulging of uh, uh, jugular vein which is a positive wave which is the a wave followed by s1 appearance of s1 closure of atrioventricular valves followed by ventricular contraction aspis bulging upward leading to production of positive small positive c wave followed by what happens the ventricle contracts vigorously floor of right atrium is pulled downwards as well as vent atrium is relaxing more spacious atrium all the blood is emptied pressure falls which is the x wave or x descent okay next the blood starts to accumulate in the atrium slowly lead to increase in the pressure volume wave which is the v wave followed by closure of s2 uh, closure of this aortic and pulmonary valves what happens next the this valve tricuspid valves open and all the blood which is stored in the atrium falls suddenly leading to rapid fall in the pressure with respect to jugular veins leading to descent known as y descent due to y's y produced because of rapid emptying empty y y descent next what happens same thing at the late part of the stroke atrium contracts leading to production of a wave so this is jugular venous pressure waveforms a c and v are the positive waves and x and y descent are the negative waves so if you see jugular venous pulse two up strokes or outward bulging waves will be there and two down strokes x and y descent inward sucking waves will be there Okay, this is the contour of JVP. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, a small question to you guys. See here, JVP has two up strokes and two down strokes. Now notice this JVP carefully. Now just try guessing what's the pathology going on with this lady. Okay, we'll be seeing the abnormalities of A wave. This and Y descent and D waves in the upcoming lecture. Just try guessing till that. Bye.